uh, attorney uh, uh, that will be representing Supervisor Perez uh, throughout these proceedings. This is Mr. Uh, Antonio Lopez Hutchison. He will uh, be co-counsel with me on the defense team to defend uh, against these charges. Um, I want to start by providing a statement of our position in light of these uh, charges that were filed by Lisa Green uh, apparently today. Uh, these particular statutes that are alleged to have been violated uh, are designed to ensure compliance with the Political Reform Act of 1974. It is the mission of the Political Practices Commission to enforce its provisions. A purpose of the Political Reform Act, and specifically Government Code Section 87100, which is what is alleged to have been violated in count one of the complaint, is to prevent a government official from participating in decisions where it appears that the official may not be totally objective because the outcome is reasonably foreseeable to have a material financial effect on the official or a member of his or her family. The evidence in this case does not support a violation of any statute under the Political Reform Act of 1974. The Kern County District Attorney's Office does not have a single email, a single text message, a transcript, or any reliable statement that Supervisor Perez's decision on the cannabis vote was in any way compromised. Supervisor Perez has always executed her official duties objectively, legally, and in the best interests of her constituents and the residents of Kern County. It is apparent from the circumstances considered by the prosecutor that their case is based upon unreliable, unsubstantiated, and conclusory statements which the defense is prepared to thoroughly discredit. The filing of these charges is inappropriate and violates constitutional provisions. This prosecution appears to be discriminatory and motivated by reasons other than the fair, objective, and just enforcement of the law. In this regard, Supervisor Perez has unlawfully been singled out and subjected to disparate and discriminatory treatment. I say that for this reason. There is at least one local elected official, Council Member Bob Smith, who was found to be in violation of the same statute charged here, Government Code Section 87100 by the California Fair Political Practices Commission. But he was not criminally prosecuted by Lisa Green's office. The defense is investigating other witnesses uh, concerning disparate treatment involving alleged violations of the Political Reform Act, which were not criminally prosecuted, but instead were adjudicated by the FPPC. We intend to vigorously defend these charges. These charges are baseless, and Supervisor Perez is entirely innocent. And I have this statement uh, for you. With that, I also have a, uh, uh, the findings of the Fair uh, uh, Political Practices Commission opinion in the Bob Smith case. And by the way, that was decided May of 2016. It was publicized in the Californian, so it was widely known to members of the community, including, we contend, Lisa Green's office. With that, I'll take some questions. Matthew, I asked Lisa Green about Bob Smith and the Bob Smith case, and she said that, that, that her office had no knowledge of the, of, the, of the case, that it was not brought to her attention. I asked what was the difference, and essentially that was, it was a limited response, but she said we had no, we had no knowledge, and the difference between the Bob Smith's case and, and uh, the thesis case is that uh, her office uh, looked into uh, the thesis case. It was in the media. I don't know what to say about that. 
um, other than it was reported in the Bakersfield Californian. So for her office to say, or for her to say, she didn't know about it, that's a convenient response. And we don't buy it. So uh, the conduct that is alleged uh, in Bob Smith's case was egregious. You can read it for yourself. I have a copy of it for you. It's egregious and much more serious than anything that's alleged in the Perez matter. And we do not b believe nor uh, accept for one minute that Ms. Perez engaged in any misconduct and certainly nothing comparable to what Bob Smith was prosecuted for under the Fair Political Practices Commission, not criminally. And this is what is so bothersome about this case that never before, to my knowledge, has there been a prosecution under this particular section. Mr. Lopez has also done extensive research, and he could speak to, to that regarding any reported opinion throughout the state where an individual has been prosecuted criminally for a violation of the Political Reform Act. Mr. Shaw is correct. After extensive legal research, there isn't a single case that shows uh, any set of circumstances remotely close to this case that was prosecuted criminally. All those circumstances amounted to a fine from the California Fair Political Practices Commission. Statewide, you're saying? Yes, sir. Statewide, state of California. So, 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 back to that question then, why do you think this case is different? Why do you think Mr. Green uh, filed charges in well, well, I can tell you, I used to be a prosecutor for the um, uh, Agriculture Labor Relations Board. And we had to prove a, discrimin a discriminatory intent uh, in the cases that I prosecuted. One of the components of that is showing disparate treatment, individuals similarly situated who are treated differently. That's the Bob Smith case. In fact, even more so because what Smith is alleged to have done, what he did do, is much more serious than anything you'll see in the reports that you, you will eventually get when they're made public. And so we've already uh, and can show disparate treatment. The question is motivation. And we will let the trier of fact decide that. We are investigating that. There will be extensive motions filed. Uh, but we believe we can show that. Because there's no reason that this case belongs in the criminal courts. No reason at all. I've tried many, many criminal cases. I've never, ever seen a case like this. And that's why I'm so adamantly in support of, of uh, Supervisor Perez, and I will vigorously defend her. Because I do not believe for one minute that she has violated uh, the law in any respect. Mr. Sala, this is the question that we've been trying to get an answer to for a while. Did Supervisor Perez's husband, Fernando Hara, consult and lobby for the marijuana industry in Kern County ahead of that vote? There will be um, reports indicated, uh, generated by the DA's office, that he had some uh, uh, consultant work. But that does not in any way mean that Supervisor Perez used her position to achieve a financial advantage, a material financial advantage for her. She has been a, 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 a supporter of uh, cannabis regulation much, much before Mr. Har ever uh, entered the consulting business. She believed it was economically feasible for the county and that it was an industry that should be adopted in, uh, here in this county because it would be, generate uh, significant income, it would generate jobs, and it would be good for the, her constituents and the residents of Kern County much, much before uh, Mr. Hara uh, initiated his consulting business. So what led Leticia to then recuse herself from any future marijuana votes? Well, I, I think it was just the, the general um, appearance that people were, were, uh, were having without knowing the detailed facts that we know in the reports. I mean, people would make that assumption, and that's why she did. Not because she believes she did anything wrong, because she did not, nor did she ever admit that she did anything, uh, uh, did anything wrong. But it certainly had that appearance to some individuals. Will, will she step down? No. Even if she 
if she gets jail time? Well, she's not going to get jail time, ma'am. Did she ever disclose the, what her husband was doing before that vote? Everyone knew what she was doing, what Mr. Har was doing. Even if they knew it, though, but did she file the proper paperwork to do make that disclosure? She's not required to do that, that Mr. Har was involved in consulting work. No. What about the second count, about failing to uh, file financial uh, statement? Was that an oversight on her part? Or what We're still looking into that, but our initial um, evaluation and research um, strongly suggests she did not violate that statute. It was disclosed in uh, the Form 700 uh, for 20... 17? Correct. Can you explain that a little bit further exactly what uh, Form 700 is and what's required of the Form 700 is a disclosure for financial interests, uh, basically. It's required to be filed uh, essentially every year, I believe. And for whatever reason, she did not file it? Uh, for, uh, it was disclosed. Uh, the precise amount was disclosed. Um, and so we're still looking into that. I don't want to get into um, additional facts at this point. Let me frame it another way, because the seven hundred form was filed, but something was left out. It seems is what the case is saying. Do you have any idea of what was left out? Was the investments or the property or whatnot? Nothing was left out of the form. The exact amount, uh, which I believe was five thousand dollars, was uh, was disclosed. Is that it? She will be uh, arraigned tomorrow morning at 8.30 in Division G. I will make the appearance, uh, uh, and uh, she will be released on her own recognizance. I've already uh, discussed that with the uh, prosecutor, and that will happen tomorrow morning. Um, also, by the way, she will be referring any questions that all of, any of you may have directly to me. I've uh, uh, indicated that... Uh, to her that I want to field any questions at this point since everything uh, is, is pending. Once Rev announced that she was going to abstain from any future marijuana votes, she actually mm -hmm. also urged Magger to do the same. The DA's office says this investigation is over, he's clean. Do you guys think more will come out of this? Well, let me uh, make a statement about that. Um, when you review the reports, you're going to see that there are a lot of unsubstantiated uh, accusations in the reports, not only against Supervisor Perez, but against other very prominent uh, members of the community and other elected officials. And a couple of examples, you'll find that uh, one of the DA's witnesses alleged that a county supervisor, not Leticia Perez, was paid $30,000 for a yes vote on a cannabis issue. You'll find in there that uh, uh, allegations that a member of the Bakersfield City Council was paid for a yes vote on a cannabis issue by a consultant for current citizens for patients' rights, but not had nothing to do with Supervisor Perez. Um, there was another private consultant, not Mr. Hara, that was alleged to have been paying uh, a county supervisor staff member who then paid that supervisor to keep a cannabis dispensary on the list of legally operating dispensaries. That same consultant gave the staff member cash to, quote, push their deal. These are the kind of wild allegations you'll see in these reports, and which is why we contend that the, the evidence is unreliable, unsubstantial, and uh, conclusory in its nature. In fact, you'll see in some of the reports that their own witnesses, even the DA's witnesses, accuse each other of lying. They call each other liars. That's in the reports. And this is the kind of evidence that they're going to proceed against uh, Supervisor Perez. We welcome it because we will challenge it vigorously. Being that this is an unprecedented case, um, how is uh, Leticia's state of mind right now? How is she going through and how is she holding up? Uh, she's uh, um, uh, very upbeat. She uh, knows she has done nothing wrong, uh, and uh, she's very confident 
uh, and will carry on with her duties and responsibilities uh, as a supervisor. Mr. Solid, yeah. uh, Mr. Harrow wrote on Facebook a little while ago that he feels that his family is basically uh, the target of political persecution in Kern County. Is that your view as well? I'm not going to comment on what Mr. Hara says. I'm commenting on what I believe the legal issues and the factual issues are in this case. And I am considering that. I'm considering our legal position and the motions that I anticipate making. So. And we do believe this is a discrimina uh, discriminatory prosecution. Do you think this is possibly politically motivated? That's possible. We'll let the trier of fact look at that, and we intend to present evidence of that as this uh, proceeds on. And by the way, the, uh, um, both United States and the California Supreme Court uh, recognize that the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment uh, is violated in if a criminal prosecution is based on an unjustifiable standard, uh, unjustifiable standard such as race, religion, the exercise of First Amendment rights, or some other arbitrary classification. So if that's the motivation, the prosecution is unlawful. As far as your office is concerned, what's the next step from here? We will uh, go forward with the arraignment tomorrow, and we will set a pretrial conference in the future. I will then, uh, uh, along with Mr. Hutchison, uh, be preparing uh, discovery motions that will address some of the legal issues that we've discussed uh, today, and uh, we will proceed from there. After uh, those motions, then uh, we are prepared to uh, proceed to jury trial. Well, some of this was based on text and emails, and, and what is your view of the evidence that the DA has given? You'll see that there is evidence involving Mr. Hara, but in none of those texts or those emails is Supervisor Perez referenced, or uh, none of those emails or texts come from her, or in any way suggest that she was going to use her position on the board to influence the board to obtain a material financial advantage or interest. There will be not a single text or email that you'll find in any of the evidence that the prosecutor will present. Good? Just one last thing, and I know you've said it a number of times, but I just want to be very clear. You believe this action is discriminatory because in past cases the standard has been different or because Supervisor Perez is the only female Latina on the Board of Supervisors at this time? What I can tell you is a Caucasian male who is politically popular, was not prosecuted criminally for the same charge that Supervisor Perez is being accused of violating. What's that tell you? And to say, well, we didn't know about it, doesn't, doesn't persuade me. It's, to me, it's not persuasive, particularly when it was in the, uh, in the newspaper. I mean, uh, you know, prosecutors, interestingly enough, uh, accuse uh, uh, defendants of saying, I didn't know. I didn't know it was there. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Come on. That, that, just, uh, that just doesn't sit well with me. Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to give you the uh, statement, and then the, if you want the... Uh